The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX here, folks, uh, since April 1st. Uh, we're looking at a top up here, and uh, if you'll pay attention to those cycles that are there, what is that depicting is the fact that you're going from high to high to high, and that's exactly what happened. It came in at the 50% retracement this morning, and it came all the way back down, dropped about 150 handles, and then so far has been in a sideways movement. But those little cycles uh, are a good way to measure from high to high and low to low. And if you went back to the far left of the chart, way back on the 26th of um, March to the 30th of March to the 2nd of April, you can see the harmony that's there. That's nothing more. When you're looking at a four-hour chart, you're looking at nothing more than a two-and-a-half-day cycle. So that's what it does, helps you to figure out where you are. Remember, on these retracement numbers, our retracement numbers that are most, the ones we like the most are 382, 50%, 618, and 786. You say, wow, that's four numbers. Well, what you try to do is you line up the four numbers with another uh, cycle or another pattern. In other words, if you have an ABCD at a 382 or a 618, that gives you more power than just seeing the ratio by itself. So I hope that helps. Now, we're going to take a quick look again here at the FTSE like we always do. And again, you're going to uh, let's get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. Uh, well, we're going to be talking about hogs in just a minute, folks. I'll be right with you here. Uh, this is the same thing on the on the on the way down. This is a one three five pattern. Um, this is also a four hour chart. You can see the distance between one three and five are equal, and it's coming in at different ratios. That's a way of forcing you to trade with the trend, and um, this will be correct unless it exceeds the price of 0.3. So that's uh, what that pattern happens to be. That is the one that we got from Roy Longstreet and his son, son Bill. So that one, I think, is also very important to uh, take a look at. Now, we had a couple of questions, and one of them, of course, was about the piggies. Folks, uh, we just had news just a little while ago that they closed one of the big, uh, I think, the third largest uh, pork-producing plant in the, all of um, – United States. Let's get this up here. So let's get this up here and take a look at the hogs. We're trading it. You'll see here we're trading around 48 today, I believe. Uh, that's pretty near cost of production. But uh, you'll notice that this thing has been just dropping like a rock ever since December. We've gone from 90 to 42. We've dropped over 50 percent uh, in value. All I can tell you is, folks, uh, you can uh, just set your watch because uh, these little piggies, uh, when they start doing their uh, their mating game, it's going to take a while before you catch up with the pigs, and they're going to be expensive before it's all over. And uh, it'll be the same thing in the cattle. We've seen this before, and we're going to see it again. So we'll see what's going on. That is, of course, unless Greenpeace comes along. And then if that comes along, then, you know, all bets are off. But we'll have to do that when that comes up. That'll be in November to see whether we have Greenpeace or not. Okay, that's the, that's the piggies. Now we had another question uh, about coffee, and we'll get this up here so you can take a look at the coffee chart. This is a daily chart going back uh, just about a year and a half. Oh, let's just say that about a year, and you can see here that we've had a big Gartley pattern that completed up there at 130. Uh, then we came down, and we've made a nice little Gartley down here somewhere between 112 and 109. I'm shooting for 109. That's still uh, still available right now. We're trading around the 113 level. But I think at 109, it would be a better pattern because you'd have a good A, B, C, D there, and you'd be setting right at the 786. Right now, you're setting right at the 61% retracement. And if you believe that is the low, all you need to do is to put your stop, you know, below that last low there. So your stop is about three cents on this, which would be the same as if you bought it down 
at the at the one dollar level that um, excuse me the one ten level that we think uh, that we think it's going to or where I think it's going to <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Okay, uh, no guests today or tomorrow, folks. The two guests that I was planning are just uh, one is out of town and the other is uh, has something planned where he has he cannot get away from the uh, uh, from that commitment. So we'll have we'll have Tim Boston hopefully you know sometime next week. Uh, let's move on here for just a second here. Um, hold on. <clears throat> Let me show you a continuation of that DAX chart that we were looking at this morning, folks. You'll see here that we uh, that was a four hour before. This is a 15 minute. You see we had the break and then we had the rally back up. So uh, that's pretty much what we've been doing right now. The market is holding up relatively well, considering that we now had 23 million people out of work. And uh, well, here we are uh, coming back to a 61% retracement of the move that we had, uh, you know, from last uh, last Friday, I believe, is when it was. So we're going to watch that one as we move through these charts that we're going to be looking at today. Um, we have a nice question from someone uh, regarding a cup and handle. Let's just get this up here so we can see it. This happens to be the, uh, this is a gold chart. I want to get this up here and uh, put this up here right here. There you go. You'll notice here, uh, this is a cup and handle. This is from uh, Bill O'Neill, you know, Investors Business Daily. Uh, I don't use any of those patterns, folks. I mean, by the time you're at the, if you're in the end of that tip of that cup and you're buying there, you know, I, there's no pattern there that I can see, so I've never been a fan of those. And <laughs> believe me, I, my, uh, we grew up with uh, uh, the uh, O'Neill the family. They, this, his kids went to school with my kids, and his number one lieutenant was Al McGregor. And uh, my little sister, my baby daughter, uh, Jilly, happens to be living with um, Al McGregor's son, Mike. And uh, it's been a long time, but they went to high school together. Some of the kids, these kids went to high school together, folks. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. There was um, Corey Klein. That was Kelvin Klein's son. Uh, they also had Rusty Weaver, Dennis Weaver. Uh, three of the kids from, uh, uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> just lost it. Uh, just as uh, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh you know it's really it's really funny when you get to be this age you, you have something right on the tip of your tongue and you can't remember you can see the person's picture you can see him at dinner with you. you no matter what you can do you still can't remember their name thankfully it doesn't happen to me very often but it, if it starts happening more I will start to be uh, I'll start to be uh, worrying about it a little bit but the more I try to think about it the harder that it is to remember the darn thing I mean I can remember oh this is uh, this is uh, oh <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you. You're going to let you guys help me. Okay, he starred in so many of the. This this is real. Oh, Laura. Laura was my daughter's really good buddy, and she was staying. She stayed overnight there so many times. Avalon, Frankie Avalon. He had eight kids, and three of them went to school with our kids. And uh, Laura was a very good friend of my uh, daughter Jill, and she and he still is. But it was uh, there was just a whole bunch of them in there, you know, just uh, really nice. You know, he's made a a living off of that. And one of the guys that he works with all the time is my cousin Fabian, uh, Fabian Forte. His grandmother and my grandmother were first cousins back in Italy. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. I want to talk a little bit about the Treasury bonds. I just posted the daily Treasury bonds. You can see the resistance that we've had over the last two weeks here. been almost a month now, actually, uh, where we've been at the 61% retracement. So this is very, very important. If we look at it on a, let's try that again, 78% retracement. 61% retracement on the daily, 78% retracement on the four hour. So I'm going to post the four hour chart here. You'll notice that we went up to the 78% level yesterday at uh, 183.04. We're now trading at 181. And I believe that we're heading down on this. So, um, you know, we've had a lot of money being pumped in by the Federal Reserve. And yet uh, these bonds are not going anywhere. No, um, zero interest rate as of yet. So we'll have to uh, to wait and see. We've had some really nice moves overnight in the gold and silver. Uh, not unexpected, of course, because we were having some type of a short-term bottom. If we look at the, uh, let's take a quick look at first, we'll look at the uh, the gold because that's the, been the strongest of the three. We'll bring them up one at a time here. And last night in the gold market, as you'll notice, we had those two corrections, the one from the 24th of March into the 1st of April. That was a seven-day correction. It was $120, and then the one from the 14th of April into the 21st, another seven-day correction. That one was $130. And uh, so far, we've rallied almost to the 78% uh, level there at uh, 7, 1760, 1762. We got up to 1759 last night. We've broken down about 11 or 12, no, $14 uh, from that level. I don't really think it uh, uh, means much yet, but if we do get much below uh, that 1730 level, then I would think, yes, maybe this is uh, made the 78% level. 
and actually has missed it by just a little bit because we missed it on the downside. You see, we missed it by $6. Uh, we were looking at for it to come in around 16.59. We got to 16.66, and so that was uh, very, very close, but uh, still not absolutely perfect. Now, if you want to see perfect, and we have perfect, let's get this one up here. This is the silver market. We'll get it up here right now, and you'll see here that what we've done uh, last night, after we completed, you, we went through the head and shoulders pattern yesterday. I don't want to repeat it. You can see the left shoulder is lower higher than the right shoulder in a bear market, which it should be. You've got a nice Gartley in between the head pattern. You measure the ABCD swing, measures exactly to the low at 1455. We rallied a dollar an ounce, a little over $6,000, and we went up to the 61% retracement. And if this is correct, we're not gonna see a trade above 1575 until we have at least another correction coming in. And that's um, that's what it looks like. So we'll. We'll uh, keep following it and let you know what happens. Now, the last one, of course, was the platinum. And if you'll remember, on platinum is a little different because uh, on the pullback this last time, uh, platinum was extremely strong from the 14th down to the uh, uh, to the 21st. That was that seven-day correction. We dropped $120, uh, went going just a little bit below the 382, and now what we've rallied so far has been exactly to the 61% retracement last night at 17, 795. So those are the key levels that we're looking at. Terry's saying, I'm having trouble with Ensign charts being too, too sensitive. Um, uh, you know, they, you know the, the problem is, Terry, um, that when they built this program for me 30 years ago, when I first moved to uh, Pismo Beach, uh, Howard and John came down and w wanted to watch me trade for a day, and they ended up staying the whole week, and it was one of those weeks where I actually did everything wrong. Haven't had a week like that since. But uh, it was actually um, that when they set this program, this Pesavento patterns that are in there that shows these ratios and draws the pattern, they drew it out to the thousandth decimal point. Well, you can't trade on the thousandth decimal point. You have a hard time trading at the hundredth decimal point. You know, I'd be happy if they just did it at, you know, the, the first decimal point, a six or a seven. But it goes out, and that's the problem. And when it catches, it's too sensitive. But the fact that it works really good is fine, and it saves me a lot of effort. So that's what what you have to do is you got to just put up with it. I've, I've never even asked him to change it because I just live with it and I go from there. You know, I, you know, folks, I'm just like in the movie City Slickers, uh, which I really care about a great deal. First time I saw it, I was here in Tucson visiting my cousin Bob and his family and uh, son of a gun. Uh, when I saw Curly and when he had that, what do you he always had his finger up saying, doing one thing, you know, that was really good. And as you know, I, Jack Polanche used to come into the uh, Drexel office, and uh, he was not my customer. He belonged to, I believe, it, uh, yeah, he was he was with Adora Chan, was uh, it was it was uh, was his broker, but he was a really nice guy, and uh, he was very, very philanthropic. He didn't live in, he was not part of the Beverly Hills crowd. He lived out in the, uh, out in the San Fernando Valley, and he lived within a block of, of Lee Van Cleef, and also living out that way was Charles Bronson, the old cowboys, you know, so that was old cowboy heaven out that way. Another guy that lived out there was a rifleman, uh, Chuck Connors, but Chuck Connors was, uh, he was a tough hombre. He was not fun to be around. Okay, let's move on here and uh, get a couple other things in before I get too melancholy. <laughs> All right, we'll take another little break here. Uh, we're having a, uh, before I, we're going to take here a break in just a few minutes, but I wanted to mention, folks, that we're approaching the 61% retracement on the S&P 500 from the high we made last Friday. That comes in, I believe, at 2820. We had some really bad news, you know, with the 24 million people out of work now over the past five weeks. Uh, you know, that's like like that's almost never happened. And hopefully some of these people will come back to work until the government runs out of money. And then we'll find out whether they come back to work or not. So uh, we're watching that. But the key to this, in my opinion, is the fact that the Dow Jones Industrial Average, remember, that's only 30 stocks and they're 
they are not cap weighted, they're price weighted. But some of those stocks that were price weighted, like Boeing and a few others, they've gotten massacred. So, you know, the whole shift is there, but you still got Apple and Microsoft in there, and that's what keeps it going. But we're only making a 38% retracement on the uh, on the move back from Friday. So if you're gonna short an index, short the weakest. You know, that right out of Jesse Livermore's book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, buy the strongest, sell the weakest. So that's really what you're looking at. So if you're looking to sell a metal, you want to sell the silver versus the uh, or the platinum is probably the weaker of the of the three. Uh, I don't like to trade platinum because it gets a little thin, but it's tradable. You know, you, you certainly can trade it. Um, it's not not as thin as some of these other things like we've seen. One of the questions that someone came to us with last night was about the uh, the sil uh, the crude oil. Uh, we've talked about crude oil, you know, several times uh, over the last few days. I posted a chart on it. Uh, the big ABCD on this crude oil coming down from the 27 high that we made last Friday down to the low at $6. We've already gone through that ABCD. The 61% retracement on back comes right at uh, 1890 to $19 a barrel. We're $2 and a half away from that, which we could be there by the time I finish this sentence. But um, that's going to be a lot of resistance, I believe, in crude oil at 18 to uh, between 18 and $19 a barrel. And believe me, that is my opinion. And you pay for it what you get. So uh, pay attention to that. Uh, I'll answer the next question about crude oil when we come back from the break. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, this is for what it's worth section of um, our show today. You'll notice that the high we made last Friday in the uh, crude oil. Now, this is still June. I keep uh, doing June. I'm looking at July. If you're going to trade, trade July. Don't trade June. Uh, the restrictions are pretty much off from what I understand, but uh, July would be the better to trade. But I have this already prepared so I don't have to double up the work. If you'll notice, the high we made back there on Friday was around $27 a barrel. We broke down to about $20 a barrel. And then you'll see uh, late Sunday, you'll notice, uh, or actually early Monday, Monday, early in the morning on Monday, we made a very small ABCD pattern there at $22. That was a 12% move in crude oil over a, a three-hour period. And from then, we started down when we went all the way down to $10 a barrel. We rallied up to $17 a barrel. And then we took the infamous road down to $6 a barrel. And that's when we went uh, negative in the uh, May contract. That's when they had the gentleman from Singapore. And as we hear from the news from our friends over in Singapore, the whole com country uh, company now has uh, filed bankruptcy. Uh, they've been in business since 1963. They've been one of the premier oil trading uh, companies in the world. And uh, the young man, uh, the son of the owner of the company and the founder, uh, made a very tactical bad decision when he stayed in, you know, his long contracts coming into delivery, and there was no place to put the uh, oil or take delivery of it. If he could have taken delivery, you know, he could have probably bailed himself out. But because he had to get out, he had to pay people to take the oil, and they didn't want to take it. And so uh, some people actually got out at, uh, there's probably a few people that were able to get out at uh, minus 40 uh, $40,000. In other words, for his contract for 1,000 barrels of oil, he had to pay $40,000 just to have someone take it. And um, it was very, very difficult for the exchange because, uh, you know, they were worried about whether they were going to get the money. Fortunately, he was he was well healed enough to cover all of these losses. And now the market is back to normal. OK, let's get relatively back to normal. After we made the bottom there at six dollars a barrel, we rallied up to 14 and then we came down. We made a 50 percent retracement. And the reason why that's important is because the time that it took to make that 50 percent retracement is the same that's happened this morning. We've taken the same number of bars from the the uh, early morning of the 22nd into where we are in the 23rd. And now you'll notice that we have a double ABCD pattern here. And that's very important because you'll notice that dark blue line there. That's a 61% retracement of the high that we made last Friday. So there's going to be a lot of resistance at uh, 18, well, in my opinion, like I said, it's for what it's worth section, uh, around 1890 to $19 a barrel is what you would be looking at. We're making a very small ABCD pattern right now. And if you trade small ABCD patterns, this might be one that you would, you know, would certainly be watching because we are, let's get this up here so you folks can take a quick look at it where we're up into small resistance. And, and this is certainly tradable. Let's just uh, hold on just a second. I got it. There we go. All right. Now I'll just get this up and then move this over and print this out for you so you'll be able to see it. The world is a, that that that's the next question. Is there a chance that the June contract will go negative? And there's always that possibility. But the, the odds of that are very, very rare because that young man made a very, very bad mistake. He had, I, there was 100,000 contracts coming into the last day, and you have to be a really big hitter to be in that group. And so what you need to do is to, uh, you know, watch the open interest. And if you have another situation like that, then yes, that's a possibility. But no one ever thought that these were ever going to go negative. I mean, I, my price objective on crude was $12, and that's the one we had from way back in September. And believe me, I wasn't short all the way down. I mean, I had some 
nice trades in between, but uh, to take that much out of it at one time, no, but the risk there was too much. But you'll notice here we do have this ABCD pattern uh, over the last uh, seven or eight hours of trading, and we're right up here at this $17 level. But again, the easier one would be up there at $19 a barrel, $18.90, $19 a barrel, and that's where you have the uh, multiple ABCDs coming in. But there is a small uh, area here where it should have some resistance here at this uh, $17.10, $17 dollar uh, a barrel oil in the thing. Remember, folks, that's up $11 a barrel from the low we made at $6 a barrel. Hard to believe that we were trading uh, this stuff at $6 a barrel in the June contract, and um, it was only for liquidation, so you had to uh, you had to be really. Uh, uh, be, pre be prepared to be able to do that with your firms, and very few people were prepared to do it that way. Okay, now we've got another one that's really important, folks, and not many people are paying attention to it. Yes, uh, July is trading at 22. Yeah, see, there's, there, see, everybody's accepting here. Yeah, using stops. You're absolutely right, Marshall. Especially in these world, the world we have now. But uh, we have March, the uh, July contracts trading at 22. The the um, the uh, June is trading at uh, 17. So it's basically they're expecting. By uh, hold on, something is happening here. My my beeper is going off to tell me that uh, something just happened. Oh, we just hit the S&P. I believe we just hit our uh, 60. Well, yep, we just hit the 61% retracement in the S&P up there at the uh, 28.17 level. So let's see how that actually moves along. Okay, let me. I have to turn this off, folks. Otherwise, it'll stop beeping. So just give me a quick second here. Oh dear, what's happened to my charts? This is not good. Dial vertical. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. Yeah, we just hit it. Okay. All righty. Let's move on to another one. This is another one, folks. It's uh, for what it's worth section. Okay. Beep, beep, beep. That's absolutely right. The old Roadrunner. Boy, do my kids love that cartoon. Oh, my gosh. All right. Let's move on to uh, this one right here is extremely important, folks. This is the biggest. This is the big daddy rabbit. This is the uh, this is the euro, folks. And I want to show you the euro because uh, we're in a really serious, really serious support here at 107 and change, 107.50. And the reason why it's so very important is because you know the euro is. Uh, 55% of the U.S. dollar index. Now, you notice here from the 23rd of March, okay, to the to roughly the 23rd of to September, where we are, September of April, where we are today, uh, that has been a 78% retracement. Well, because the euro should be a mere image of the dollar index, the dollar index should be setting right at a 78% level also, if that's correct. And boys and girls, believe it or not, that is not what's happening. Let me show you this chart here. I'm not sure what it means yet because I just look at the uh, charts. But if you look at the dollar index chart, we're just barely above the 382 retracement. We can't even make that Gartley up there at 10170. And we're not even taking out the highs of uh, April the 1st yet. So this is actually a pretty bearish i.e. Um, dollar index chart, which means the euro would most probably be be, be friendly here at that 107.50 level. Now, this could change in a heartbeat, of course, but that's what it's looking at, you know, here this morning. It's a really quite amazing because they follow just like a mirror image. Well, because it's 53% of the dollar index. We'll take a little break here. We'll cover a couple of commodities like our old favorite July corn, 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. 
A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, thanks for staying with us. The next one we're going to take a look at here is the July corn. As you remember, we went into the farming business. You're absolutely correct. It is a three drive on a 60 minute. You'll notice here that we were looking to go in at 325, which we did. And then, unfortunately, there was a U.S. Day report that said that ethanol was going to go somewhere to zero. <laughs> and since corn is 30 percent of that, we'll be able to see that. Um, so we'll be able to see if that's right. Very, very good, JP. That's what you pay your business for. And we'll be able to see if that's going to hold it. Uh, if you, in fact, you're trading in a contract that's worth the S&P contract is worth uh, a little over 140,000 now. So you only have to risk, uh, you know, about $500 on that. So that's a good risk reward ratio. So we'll see. But it's handling the bad news badly. But don't forget, the, the, the government is giving things away. None of the people that um, that we live around or anything has gotten anything. So. Um, you know, we'll have to have to wait and see if, uh, in fact, uh, that happens. So we'll see. Okay, the next one that I wanted to mention, uh, talk about this July corn. What's the next step in the July corn? Folks, when stuff like that happens, and it happens all the time, is that you want to wait for another pattern that is uh, – that'll give you a very good risk-reward ratio. Now, that was a pretty good one. We had a double ABCD pattern, and, of course, the uh, report hurt, but that's the way the business is. It could have been the other way around. So what I'm going to be watching is I'm going to let the, I'm going to let the corn get above the three, 335 level, and then I'm going to be looking for a retracement buy with a nice little ABCD, a smaller Gartley on a maybe 60-minute chart. So that's true. Let me ask you a question in here since we're in here. How many people have received their checks from the government? Because uh, I've, several people have asked me and I have um, not involved. So I'd like to know if you have. Uh, I haven't heard anybody yet. I The five or six people that I, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I know the trouble. I understand, Duffy. See, look, oh, yes, see, no, we're no, nobody's getting the checks. And I know the people they're giving the money to. Do you believe that they gave 
They gave $15 million to Harvard, and they have an endowment of like $20 billion. Boy, that sucks. And Columbia University, the same thing. I mean, I saw that last night on the news. That's just not very good. By the way, by the way, we're going to have a little test here today. The person that gets the answer to, to this correctly will win a very, very valuable book for me. I will actually pick one out of my my library, and I will hand address it, sign it, and it won't be for me. It'll be from one of the other authors that I've collected through the years. I'll pick it myself. But what was the most significant thing that happened yesterday in the news? Can anybody tell me? I'm going to give you a couple seconds here, maybe 20, 30 seconds to see if you can get it, see if there's any things out there. Look, see, nobody's got it. It's not one person here has gotten their... Uh, you know, base. Oh, wait, Jim. Jim got his. Okay, Jim and his wife got his. So you're basically what? One out of ten people. So that's not a very good return. Can anybody think of what's happened? It literally wasn't even mentioned in the news very little, but it was really big. Okay. Do you know what it was, folks? Do you know that SpaceX, the company of um, uh, Elon, uh, uh, Elon Musk, they got a contract to do 12,000 satellites. Over a period of years, can you stop and think 12,000 satellites? You know what that's going to do? That's going to light up the night sky. It's going to put astronomers out of business. They won't be seen, they won't be able to see the new moons and full moons. There'll be so many things flying around up there. Now, the $64 question that I have for you is, why are they putting up 12,000 satellites? What is the reasoning for this? Hmm, it wouldn't be to collect information, would it? No, that wouldn't happen. Oh yes, I know what it's for. Traffic lights. There you go. You're right. It's a uh, it's a re it's a remake of um, a Brave New World by Huxley and also uh, the one by uh, uh, Huxley and uh, oh boy, I'm telling you, I think it's getting right. George Orwell. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Eyes in the Sky. That was actually in uh, that was a great movie. I really enjoyed that one. But uh, we'll we'll see what's going on. Gold is uh, 1753 now. Uh, is it really that much? I think it's going to be uh, looking at. Uh, let me double check that. Since you said 1753, we had a buy on that just a little go at 44 when it came down. Yeah, it did. Had a really nice buy on the gold. It was down, uh, you know, 14 dollars. That's usually all you get. And if you take a look at this, I'll just bring this up here and let you see, you know, what the prediction was. And so, thank you very much for telling me that. That's very nice of you. And if you'll give me one little second here, I will get this done, and we'll move on to the next one right here and we'll go from that level. So let's keep an eye on that as we look, walk through and see some of these other things moving in here. Remember, folks, there's a lot of resistance up there at 1762, 1760. So if we're making a new high in the gold, uh, don't get too excited because, uh, you know, there's a big ABCD up there and there's a big 786 hanging at 762 but boy above 762 you could easily get this thing moving you know a great deal uh higher and uh be be very very careful of that another question someone just asked about the the, 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 the july of course i'll watch july corn and that's one of the things that i do for the 24 7 folks and my game plan here is to let the july corn get around the the 339 340 level that's up about uh, 25 cents from the bottom, and then I'll look for a small ABCD pattern. Folks, when I first started trading corn, the average range in corn for the week was about five cents. It was trading between a dollar ten and a dollar twenty-five. That that went on for several years during the 60s, and then of course when the Russian grain robbery came in, it was a lot different. But uh, corn is a good one to trade, and uh, it's it's actually a fun one to trade. So just let's watch that as we can say now. Well, we just hit the uh, we just hit that ABCD pattern in the crude oil at $17 a barrel. Remember we looked at that ABCD so far the high has been uh, 1742 we're trading at 1694 now so if that's correct we're not going to get much above the uh, 1750 without at least a little pullback of maybe a dollar dollar and a half an ounce and that's quite a bit so those are no that's another one that looks very interesting too 
Uh, let's uh, move on to the uh, Treasury bonds. Someone has a question whether I think the Treasury bonds are going to go to zero interest rates. I don't think so. But then again, that's a for what it's worth section because uh, I just look at the charts and that's all I'm looking at. And the charts tell me that unless we get, if we can get it above 184 in the bonds, then sure, there's a chance that, you know, we could certainly do that. But until that happens, it doesn't appear that that's what's going to be going on there. So that's my two cents worth. With the volatility the way it is now, folks, the best way, if you're a swing trader, is to move your operation down from a daily and you'll start looking at hourly and half hour charts because the swings now, what we used to get on a daily, we got on 15 minute charts, sometimes two and three times a day. So you have to take advantage of those the best you can. And uh, you can't be up all night, of course. I try, but I can't. And, uh, you, you know, you'd have to be really careful of what you're watching. Watch for the markets repeating. Just look look what happened to crude over the last day or so. Perfect retracements. Time and price exactly at 50%. Both of the, both the retracements were equal. I mean, that's, a, that's the kind of stuff that you like to see. Because when we got to $14, I mean, look, we've rallied $3,000, and we're talking about one, two, three, four, five hours uh, in, in just a short period of time. Now, if this is correct, we'll take a break. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to bring to your attention the crude oil that we were just talking about because it's a short-term pattern, but we ought to look at it just to see if it works. Remember, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But if you look at the crude oil here over the last uh, few uh, days here, you'll notice here, last, well, the last day and a half, we've had these smaller ranges. I mean, these are big moves from $13 to $16, down to $14, up to $17. If this is correct, the correction here should be from $17.40 down to about, uh, say, around $16. So it would be a buck and a half. So it should move a buck and a half lower, just like we did uh, earlier this morning. And then from there, that could take us up to that level that we're looking at. To, you know, we would really have a good place to sell it short which was be at 1890. Now remember, these are these are patterns. There's nothing to do with fundamentals or anything like that. So you've got to, you know, protect yourself by using stops and learn how these patterns work. But they don't work all the time. But they work some of the time. But nothing works all the time, except the 200 and 400 day moving average. Those work really good when they crisscross back and forth. But yes, there is probably a very very good V bottom has formed in oil. I don't think we'll ever see oil below six dollars a barrel anymore. That was really an aberration, folks. They had someone in the crosshairs, and they taught them a lesson. I mean, you know, this is really, really bad what they did. It was just like, you know, the Bearings Bank. And by the way, I think today is the Queen's birthday. So happy birthday to the Queen. She leaves such a sheltered life, that young lady. All right, folks. Uh, I am hoping to have Bill Meridian as our uh, guest next week. And then I have one mystery guest that I want to be able to bring up. Uh, hopefully it's someone from back in the days of the Merck. Uh, it was one of the big players there, and we'll be able to see if uh, what's going on at that point. So pay attention to what's going on in that euro versus the dollar. Uh, dollar index that that's we don't see that very often so that's telling you something it could be telling you that the other currencies like the Australian the Canadian and the Swiss and some of the others the Japanese yen are going to start to move to make the dollar index go down so pay attention to those other cross rates we'll probably cover those tomorrow because I'm going to do a special thing on the newsletter this weekend about the current currencies and this divergence so we'll watch it so live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless Thank you.